Hello, Evan White here, and welcome back to Reach. Month three is all about action. In this portion of the program, you'll be designing an action plan for your organization when it comes to community activations, town halls, your various meetings, and overall event planning. You will learn ways to create engagement at your board meetings, committee meetings, town hall events, neighborhood cookouts, cleanups, and more. I will walk you step by step through the engage method for event creation, and very soon, you'll be engaging with your neighbors online and in person, bringing your brand to where the people are. Engage. E is for elaborate. No idea is too crazy. Dream big and get creative. N is for name it. Pick a name that people will remember and want to share. The first G is for get going. Get your volunteers and get planning the day of. A is for ah, and that was a yell. Tell as many people as you can, get excited about it, and yell about it. The next G is getting the word out. Tell your WTTFs, run ads, and alert the press. Go, go, go. E is for evaluate. Learn what worked and what needs to work better for next time. If you take action on what you see and hear in this video, if you use the tools, click on the links, and do the work, you will create events that have a draw for your constituents and a reason for people to attend. You will learn how to create and run effective town halls that will result in real engagement with your neighbors and you will set up your very own outreach roadmap looking 6, 12, and 18 months down the road. Within the action course materials, you will begin targeting various demographics to access and gain feedback from your whole community. You will learn to start capturing new people and build a database of engaged neighbors to tap into. When you truly build a community, you understand who your engaged neighbors are and what they are passionate about. To get us started, here are a few questions. When was your last town hall event? Was your last town hall engaging? How could it be improved upon for next time? First, I will address timing of the town halls. Humans like repetition. It caters to our need for stability and security. Routine makes us feel safe. So when I think about events and neighborhood town halls, I like to try to make them yearly or quarterly from the outset. You should be creating events that leave people wanting more and asking when the next event will be. Planning also becomes more comfortable when you think about these events in this way. Because once you do the work for prepping and planning for the first episode, you will have a starting place for each episode that follows. This pertains to budget allocations as well. It becomes easier to plan and work as a board if the treasurer is in the loop on all of your event planning desires. Their job becomes much easier when they can allocate budgets for events, promotions, and outreach upgrades months in advance, as opposed to month by month planning. One of the annual events that I've been lucky enough to be a part of since 2014 is the Venice Holiday Sign Lighting. This is a Chamber of Commerce event that shuts down the street on Windward Circle and Pacific under the historic Venice sign. We install a giant stage and invite the community to come celebrate the holidays with us. At our last Venice Holiday Sign Lighting, 50 plus booths lined the activation area. There were food vendors, live music, art for the kids, and more. We have giant Ferris wheel, games, photo booths. It really is fun for the whole family. Each year, there is a different surprise local celebrity on hand to pull the switch and turn the historic Venice sign on with green and red lights. Past stars include Matthew Modine, Robert Downey Jr., and Pink. You'd love it. And part of the reason you'd love it is the event has repetition. The Venice holiday sign lighting is always on the first Saturday of December. This way, the planning group knows to block off the time and how budgets will need to be aligned a full year out. It also gives the neighborhood time to plan and in many cases, something to look forward to. This is a big one. This repetition gives the public, our neighbors and fellow Angelinos, the ability to know that they can expect this annual community event. There is a link below to a local TV news story on our 2019 event. Give it a watch later, as it tells a beautiful story of how this annual event has taken shape over the years and how it has positively impacted local businesses. What I am saying is this, if you can build repetition into your events, and your event cycles, then you will earn attention from your audience. Next questions. How many members of the public came to your last meeting? How many board members came to your last meeting? How many city services or office representatives came to your last meeting? When it comes to your public meetings, there are plenty of ways to entice people to come. Some of these ideas were presented in previous videos, but I will share them again with you now. First, I will say, having walked in your shoes and sat in your seats before, I know that most of the work gets done at the committee level. After my initial dip into the Venice Neighborhood Council waters, 
at the first VNC Silicon Beach panel, I really jumped in when I joined the Boardwalk Committee. It went like this. Matt introduced me to Tom, and Tom was the Boardwalk Committee Chair. Tom also owned a local restaurant, which ensured that all of his meetings had plenty of delicious appetizers and things for us to snack on while we talked about the various issues on each agenda. Other VNC Committee Chairs, like Holly, are known to prepare full spreads for our evening meetings. People love it, they stay longer, and they seem to be engaged more. And we always get more done. Many of our VNC and Venice Chamber of Commerce meetings are held at local watering holes like the Waterfront and Brennan's, which allow for a public space plus food and beverage to be enjoyed by everyone. For our full general board meetings, we always have fruit trays, veggies, cookies, coffee, water, and often pizza or sandwiches on hand. The board purchases some of this, and some, I'd like to say most, are donated from local community members and businesses. Having food at these meetings helps feed the volunteer board members who are donating their time to their community and also acts as bait to lure in the neighbors to come and stay. Another great way to increase engagement at your meetings is by inviting more city services and official representatives to come and present to your group. I have seen some neighborhood council agendas filled with 10 plus city services updates on a single night. On social media, follow your city services your social services, the police, city council reps, libraries, planning, everybody. Then invite them to your meetings. Give them each a few minutes on your monthly agenda and let them know that they can count on you to have a forum ready to speak directly to your neighborhood. The tighter you are and your organization is with these people, the better. Ask these representatives to bring materials for you to have at the table events and attend your next town hall or neighborhood hootenanny. Give them a photo op and a microphone, and I can almost guarantee they'll send someone. Start thinking about your meetings like they are community conversations, and set the table in a way that appeals to the people you're inviting. Let's take a pause here, as I would like you to write down a list of ways that you can better set the table for these community conversations. What will make your neighbors want to be more involved? What are you bringing to the table? How are you stoking the conversation? If your agenda has issues of concern to the neighborhood, like the real problems that the people see and touch and are affected by every day, they will add their voice to the conversation. Okay, stop the video now and make that list. Here's an idea. Post your meeting agenda to more than the minimum required locations. What do I mean by this? Generally, neighborhood councils are required to display their meeting agendas in two physical locations as well as online, 72 hours in advance of a meeting. Check your bylaws, but what I'm suggesting here is that why stop there? Once you have your agenda, print a handful of them. Ask your local coffee shop if they'd leave a few out for the next few days. Drop a copy off at the local schools and suggest that each teacher gets a copy in their box. Better yet, when you drop off the agenda at the schools, donate some community-based books to their library or the various classrooms. This will anchor you and your organization to this place of education, and they will remember you, and they will start to become more accessible. Is there a major intersection or a street in your community where people hang banners or posters? Maybe on a big fence or between two palm trees on an empty corner lot. This is an opportunity for action. Get your organization a large custom banner with your logo, digital footprint assets, and information on your various meeting dates and times. Part of being where the people are is finding the opportunities to take action to get your brand out there. Next, let's talk about influencers for a moment. I have been working with influencers for many years, and they come in all shapes and sizes. In a town like Los Angeles, there are entire agencies set up to help brands broker deals with the most sought after online influencers from around the globe. But in this context, we're talking about a more micro influencer. What type of micro influencers do you have in your community? This could be anyone with a large following on social media, someone who runs an email list, or a local website with neighborhood news. These local micro-influencers are the people that we'll be telling first about all of your events and happenings. They are your WTTFs, or your who to tell firsts. WTTFs help share the outreach to your community. In the links attached to this course module, you will find a starter document to build your WTTF list. The goal here is to treat them like an insider, getting all of the cool info first. They will be honored that you thought of them and feel like part of the team and they will be excited to share the news more freely. Moving along here to a few more questions. How many connections do you have on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter? How many people live in your neighborhood? 
what percentage of them voted in your last election. Go find your numbers. Hit the pause button now, open your phone, and go look. For Twitter, the average number of followers per account is 707. This is the average of all 400 million accounts, and some of them have no followers at all. For Insta, they say the average number is 150 for a personal account. And on Facebook, the average number of friends we each have is 338. Use this information as a gauge, but not as the end-all be-all. Because at the end of the day, these are just numbers, not people. We're interested in engaging with real people, not with numbers. Your neighborhood numbers are far more interesting to me. Here's a quick math lesson. In Los Angeles, there are roughly 4 million people. And there are currently 99 neighborhood councils. Which means each NC serves approximately 40,000 people. When it comes to marketing in general, after doing this for over a decade, I really feel like we need to stop looking at people like they are just numbers. This happens on social media a lot, and it's not a good practice. Instead of marketing to the numbers, we need to be creating content that will interest and capture, rather than checking for the followers and likes. When you nail that, creating content that will interest your 40,000 neighbors, you'll begin turning those numbers into a team. And to really truly create community organization that is connected to the area it is serving, you need a team to thrive. Start filling those rosters. Build a perspective lineup for each committee. Become partners with other community supporters. Do the work and it will become a reality. More questions associated with numbers. Did you know that your next NC election cycle starts in 2021? How would it feel to double the turnout since the last election? What would it look like to have three times as many candidates? Believe it or not, you can accomplish these things. It doesn't matter how many candidates you had last time. Just find the number, and if tripling that number is your goal, you can do it. You're on the board. You know what your last elections looked like. How hard would it be to double or triple the number of people that turned out to vote? Across all of Los Angeles neighborhood councils, the last NC election saw some 25,000 people turn out to vote. So even if your NC carried 20% of that total and you had 5,000 voters, no one did. Venice had the largest turnout, and we saw just under 2,000. But the point is, there would still be room to grow from that 5,000 mark, because we just learned that each neighborhood represents about 40,000 neighbors. If I'm doing my math right, and I'm pretty sure I am, then one in every 160 Angelinos voted in their neighborhood council election. That's an average of about 250 voters in each of the neighborhoods. So grow, baby, grow. There is plenty of sunshine to go around. We just need to fertilize. Historically, Venice elections have always been well attended. And I have voted in the past four Venice Neighborhood Council elections, which have consistently seen upwards of 2,000 and sometimes nearly 3,000 voters during the six hour window. That's 300 plus people per hour, and we're talking lineups around the park. How do we do it? We work at it. We're working at it well in advance of the election, monthly in fact. And you can see this work in our committee outreach spending habits, and in our events. The VNC budgets heavily for outreach, and specifically elections outreach every other year. Go take a peek at our yearly budgets on the city clerk funding page listed below. The VNC board hosts community events in the months and weeks leading up to each election day, and we'll be introducing the candidates to our voters. Funds are allocated to spend mailers. We print and distribute voter guides with photos and bios for everyone running on the board seat. We suggest that each candidate running get a minimum of 100 votes to even become a contender. We're planning for a significant turnout from the beginning. Next, I will be taking you through my Engage methodology for town hall event and even meeting event planning. I will teach you how to get the word out, and then, post-event, we will take a look at a few ways to evaluate your successes. Does that sound good? All right, here we go. E is for elaborate. In the initial idea stage of your event planning, we go big, then we go even bigger. There is no bad idea here. We're trying to be as creative as possible. What would your community just love? What has never happened in your neighborhood before? Can we bring in a snow machine? How about a petting zoo? Would the mayor attend if there was a sky rider? These are the types of things you should be thinking about. When I was tasked with finding and convincing people who lived in the greater LA and South Bay communities to take their first step into the new LAX Aloft Hotel, I knew I was going to be finding a needle in a haystack. And in the end, that's exactly where I looked. I created such an extensive list of crazy things to do that when I landed on a morning yoga session, complete with mimosas, a Bloody Mary bar, 
and of course, the most LA thing ever, cute, adorable baby goats, I knew it was going to be over the top and the Instagram community would love it. I elaborated on every iteration of a happy hour, every interesting social interaction, and kept compiling a list until I created gold. Next up is N for naming your event. Great events have fun names, like the Venice Hootenanny or Guac and Roll. Great events also happen regularly, like the Venice Holiday Sign Lightings. When it comes to naming, you can go in a few directions. You can find words unique to the event or unique names for events, like Bazaar, Shindig, or Hootenanny. Puns can help make your event name whimsical and easy to remember, like Pig Out in the Park. Another direction you may choose is smashing two or more words together to form an entirely new word, like I did with Splash Mob, which was a flash mob style event on Venice Beach that the Viddy community loved. My goat yoga event also had a perfect name, but if I'm honest, the perfect name didn't come straight out of the gate. It wasn't until the second or third event that it hit me. I had brought goat yoga to El Segundo. Goat yoga, goga, in El Segundo, the gundo, goga in the gundo. Once you have the name, G is for getting going. Quickly set the time, date, and pick the perfect venue. Make sure that your whole organization is bought in on the idea and that you have blocked out time on their calendars and that they are excited and ready to volunteer for at least two hours during the event, plus either setup or breakdown. Getting going is the stage a lot of the pre-work gets done. And to make sure you have all the volunteers needed to pull things off, I suggest using one of the easy to use digital tools like Doodle or Sign Up Genius to help organize volunteer hours and signups. Both are linked below. Once you have the volunteers list, you need to start planning every detail of the day of, including food, drinks, speakers, timing, pre-setup, breakdown, everything. This is where the real work begins. Let your committee carry the load here, but check in as often as a group as possible. The A is for ah, and that was a yell. Once the RSVP details are set, get it online and start inviting. Your event should first go on Eventbrite, then link that Eventbrite post to your Facebook event and click Publish. Make sure the Facebook event link is saved and used for your next email blast and peppered into various social media posts on Twitter, Facebook, and Insta weekly leading up to the actual event date. We're not done yet. G is for getting the word out. Ask each of your board members to click the RSVP online and then tap them to personally invite some of their friends and other community members. Ask your event venue to help share the news with their audience and fans as well. Their email marketing, social media, event flyers, ads, etc. The next stage of getting the word out is sharing the event link with local community groups and alerting your WTTFs, the who to tell firsts. Once your WTTFs have the info, this is when you would be spinning up digital advertisements of your own and on the PR side, you can begin to share this exciting event news with the community and various local press outlets. I've attached a few press release drafts in the materials section, and we can discuss in more detail some of the best practices for reaching out to local media and event calendar sections in our one-on-one -on -one call. Day of is a whole nother beast, and I'll be creating bonus materials with best practices for event day ideas soon. There are also links and downloads attached below to help your planning, and we can always talk about this more on our one-on-one -on -one calls. Then comes the last E in Engage, which is for Evaluate. At your first outreach committee meeting, following your event, set aside 15 minutes to debrief how things went. Discuss everyone's pros and cons, and come up with the ways that make the next event better. More significant, with more conversations, and more engagements. Evaluation is key if you want to keep growing, and there is never a better time to evaluate than immediately after whatever it is you're evaluating. In a perfect world, you're passing out short questionnaires to the attendees as they leave, asking for their advice. These types of real-life evals are great to bring to your outreach evaluation sessions. So there you have it. This is my engage event planning method, where we elaborate and elaborate and elaborate until we have a compelling topic and value adds for the people you're trying to attract. We name the event in such a way that it makes people smile, remember it, and it is fun and easy for them to share with their friends. We get going, making sure that the commitment from your team is there, and they're ready to help carry the load. We yell it from the mountaintops and invite people like crazy, digital and otherwise. We get the word out to your WTTFs, local press, influencers, your full board, your friends, 
and any lists available from the speakers, venues, etc. And we evaluate what worked and what could be improved upon before your next event. I suggest using these methods for all of your events and meetings you plan. They really help you engage with more people, and that's a promise. Now we will dive a bit deeper into some of these aspects and some of the events I've helped organize where we use the Engage method. The Venice Barbecue had a 10-year run, and I participated in half of them. During those years, I was tasked with literally pulling the pork that fed thousands of people. It was something else. During this run, the Venice Barbecue was a staple of the Venice summer, and the VNC spent $5,000 a year on the meat alone. The organizers worked with local fire station 63 to cook hundreds of pounds of barbecued chicken and pork that local community members got to enjoy. The Venice Hoot Nanny took over where the barbecue left off, becoming a well-branded and fun neighborhood family day in the park, complete with local bands playing music, games for kids and families, and a fun, safe environment to connect with neighbors and friends. To advertise for these events, as well as for our annual Green Expos and other Venice Town Halls, the VNC allocates funds for USPS mass mailers, walking man for flyer distribution, social media ads, traditional media ads, yard signs, posters, and more. Nine times out of ten, there is also a budget for either a bounce house or some other type of interactive component for kids and families to enjoy. All of these events target various demographics, and in the marketing world, the term used here is personas. You can think of marketing personas as the people you are really trying to go after. Here's your homework. What are the personas of your target community members? I want you to really think about this. Spend some time at your next outreach meeting to go over the worksheet attached. Name them. Describe them. Ask yourself, who wants and needs the product that your organization is selling? When you focus your attention and target your full community, you will open the window and gain access to the feedback from all community members, including homeowners, renters, workers, everyone. Take some time now to outline some of these key personas that make up your community. Parents, youth, seniors, business owners, various workers, people at the dog park, churchgoers. What is the makeup of your community? The aim here is to appeal to as many of these personas as possible, then to create events that will have a draw and a reason for them to tend for everyone. Not all of your activities will resonate with the community as a whole, so be ready to adapt and step out of your comfort zone. One more note on your WTTFs, or your who to tell firsts, and how and when you should be reaching out to your local media outlets. Start by doing your research. Get to know your local media, including newspapers, magazines, radio stations, and television reporters. Find them on social media, Follow them with your organization and with your personal accounts, and get to know their voice, how their content varies from day to day and section by section. Take note on the names of the writers, editors, broadcasters who produce stories about your community. When it comes to approaching local journalists, you should start by introducing yourself when you see them at events or when you start following them on social media. Be friendly, but don't be pushy. Once you make these connections, start feeding stories to these new friends. When a newsworthy event occurs that relates to your neighborhood or your community organization, let them know about it via email or a tweet. Tip them off on a local and exciting items that your board will be discussing on your monthly agendas. Feed them details on the long-standing community pillars of your organization that you're celebrating with special birthdays or a milestone of public service. You can also be creating and exploiting PR opportunities. An example of creating an opportunity to maximize publicity is tying your events and outreach to something that already has a news peg, such as Valentine's Day, the first day of school, or that summer solstice sex education town hall I'd mentioned before. Figure out when the next meteor shower is going to be visible from your zip code and host a neighborhood science fair that evening. Pass a motion to install street art and crosswalks near school zones and time the installation with back to school season. Once you have a strong relationship with your local media outlets, and your local WTTFs, like the email list operators and neighborhood Facebook moderators, you can bounce ideas off of them and grow your community together. Success stories are very attractive to readers and listeners alike, and the press would rather hear these types of stories than a sales pitch. So try tying your outreach to community anniversary or sharing with them that your organization is awarding a community member with an important accolade. This is another example of a way to exploit a natural opportunity with the media. 
Be sure to review these efforts and refine them. We can talk more about creating your own PR on our one-on-one -on -one calls, but know that there is a high degree of trial and error involved. It all comes down to timing, but as you increase your connections and raise your profile, you will have a better chance of making big waves with your local influencers and local media. Now take this information and run with it. Use the tools, do the work, click on the links, and start creating events that pull your community in. Engage with them, invite them to participate. This is action. Up next is the homework section, so stay right there. Your next video is about to begin.